Welcome to another edition of Horse Center, everyone. I am Brian Zipsy. And as always, I have the terrific pleasure of being joined by my co-host to the East Coast. That's Matt Schiffman. Matt, are you ready to talk derby to me? I am, Brian, and nothing better than early derby talk, too. Derby talk is always good whenever you can get it, sir. Folks, what we're going to do this week is, well, we're about five and a half months, I don't know, 24 weeks or so from the first Saturday in May 2018. We're going to talk derby to you. Matt and I are going to talk about all our favorite derby prospects this early in the season. We've compiled a list of 15 of our favorites right now as we get closer to the end of the 2017 season. Matt and I were in total agreement on who the top two are. And I'm going to go first, Matt. My number one, I believe it was your number two, was Bolt Doro, the son of Medaglia Doro, trained by Mick Ruiz. Lost his last race. It was the Breeders' Cup Juvenile, Matt, but I thought it was a hell of a performance. It's his only loss. I think he's the best two-year-old in the country, and I don't see any reason why this California young star can't be around next year when we get to the Spring Classics. He's got the good. He's got the goods, Brian, and uh, son of Medaglia Doro um, got breeding and and performed really well. Um, I liked Good Magic uh, uh, better in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile, not only because he won, but because of the way he drew away from the field at the end and and won with authority, improved over his problems in the Champagne Stakes. Either way, Brian, those are two very nice horses. Very well bred and uh, really worthy prospects for our Kentucky Derby top tens. Not just for now, but hopefully we'll see him in April and May. Absolutely, Matt. Yeah, uh, Bolt Doro is a Medaglia Doro out of an AP Indy mare. Good Magic is out of the good uh, hard spun mare, Kalinda the Good, a stakes winner a few years ago. She's a, she's a, 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 He is a son of Curlin. Now, Matt, getting back to the Breeders' Cup Juvenile, I thought Baldoro is a winner with a fair trip, with an equitable trip versus good magic. I thought he lost about 10 lengths going into that first turn. Just all kinds of ground. Corey Nakatani was on him that day. I think he wins with a good trip, but no doubt about it, good magic ran a very big race uh, out there at Del Mar. It was only his third race, his first win. Uh, but I, as we have talked about before, the maiden race was very good. And then the champagne is where I really started to like good magic quite a bit. Uh, we agree on one, two. We just have them in reverse order. Some other horses we agreed, Matt. Let's start with Dak Attack. Now, Dak Attack has only run twice. Son of Ghost Zapper, trained by Dale Romans. Uh, he won at Churchill Downs in his career debut. And then he won the Ellis Park Juvenile. I was there that day and I came away very impressed with the uh, Ghost Sapper son. He's out of an Indian Charlie mare. Uh, he had uh, just a, a little tiny setback in training, uh, enough to keep him uh, uh, out of the Breeders' Cup juvenile picture. But I think Dak Attack is one of the most potentially good two-year-olds that I've seen this year. I, I agree with that, Brian. Uh, um, Dale Romans has, has got a loaded barn for this year's Kentucky Derby. Absolutely, Matt. Uh, the fourth horse, I believe, is a horse that you've seen in person, and he's only won once. Uh, but this son of Medaglia Doro, out of an AP Indy mare, just like Bolt Doro, looked awfully impressive. Yep, and of course, we're talking about Montauk and another horse that's got breeding on both sides to uh, be a Triple Crown contender. Um, we've got a, this is a Todd Pletcher trainee, of course, who won his debut at Belmont Park by 11 lengths. And then they decided to give the horse a little bit more time. Go ahead, all you anti Todd Pletcher people. I hear you talking, but I just want to remind you that Mr. Pletcher won the Derby last year with Always Dreaming. That's right. Todd Pletcher is on a Kentucky Derby winning streak now, man, of one in a row. One of the best trainers in uh, the United States, for sure. Interestingly, Matt, we, we've identified 15 horses as their favorite at this point, and only one of them is trained by Todd Pletcher. Montauk is out of a very nice uh, AP&D mare, as I mentioned. Her name was Indian Vale, a stakes horse there. 
Uh, there are a lot of repeat trainers on this list, but only one Pletcher. We'll see how long that lasts. But Montauk looks certainly looks like any kind after that big seven furlong performance back at Belmont Park. Another one who's gained a lot of talk with only one race in the books. We're going to start talking about the Bob Bafferts now, Matt. And we got to mention McKinsey, who may have been the most impressive out of all of them. Another horse who's really bred not only very well, but also bred to go longer. He's a street sense out of a uh, Patientville, a stakes uh, Patientville mare named Runway Model. You had to like what you saw from McKinsey's one and only race. Yeah, a big five lengths victory at Santa Anita that earned a 99 buyer speed figure, which is a very, very big number for a two-year-old. And and amongst our groups, it's only just behind uh, the 100 that Good Magic earned in the juvenile and the 103 that Boldoro earned in the front runner. So that, that bodes well for that Baffert runner. And we're going to talk about more Baffert runners. But before we do that, let's talk about probably the best trainer in Europe, Matt. And that's Aiden O'Brien. Uh, he has a horse who's never run on dirt, but we know he's a good turf horse. We sure do. That We're talking about Mendelssohn in here. Uh, talk about a pedigree. Talk about a looker. That horse sold for $3 million as a yearling and then made uh, winning the the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Turf looked easy when he slipped up the rail and was an impressive winner. So fans, you might be saying, so why are we interested in the Derby? Because you, we all know who this, uh, this cult is related to. This cult is a half to Beholder and to the prominent sire into, into Mischief, who has some of the horses that are we're going to talk about on our list. So um, if Aiden O'Brien's ever had a shot at the Derby, this horse has got the, the dirt breeding also to go with his powerful turf win. Yeah. How good is Sire with Scat Daddy? Of course, Scat Daddy uh, died prematurely. So uh, not much left as far as the Scat Daddy line, but Mendelssohn uh, maybe the best bred horse on this list, Matt. Impressive in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Turf. Got a great ride, by the way, by Ryan Moore that day. Obviously, he's never run on dirt, as all his previous races came in Europe. But uh, they are definitely looking at the Kentucky Derby with this horse, Beholder's little brother, bred to run on dirt. Matt, speaking of Into Mischief, another half-brother to Mendelssohn, as you mentioned. He's the sire of the next horse on our list, Engage. And Engage is another one from uh, Chad Brown's barn, just like Good Magic. Engage has yet to go a distance. He's run three times. He's uh, won two in a row, and I really like the way he rallied strongly to win the Futurity at Belmont. We want to see him run a little longer, but uh, into mischief out of a Spitestown mare, I think there's good reason to believe, especially the way he relaxed early and finished late in the Futurity, that Engage could be a horse who gets the distance as well. Yeah, I, I like not only his closing move in there, but I like the way he pulled away uh, uh, towards the finish line there. It looked like there was a horse coming up on his outside that was going to go right by, but when Engage was asked to run, he just pulled away and opened up to like a four or five length victory. So I really liked what I saw from, uh, from that horse. Um, another horse that we have on our list is... Uh, is a horse that made some noise a little bit earlier this year, and that is Copper Bullet. Copper Bullet uh, had some ha has had some big wins. Won the Saratoga Special from the Steve Asmussen Barn. I I like this horse because he's got some experience under his belt, but he was a little bit quirky and had 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 a lot to learn racing greenly. And I think if uh, as the year goes by and next year with experience if Asmussen can can solve those problems there's a lot of talent there with Copper Bullet yeah I like his breeding a lot as well Matt he's the son of more than ready out of an unbridled song mare that's good breeding whether we're talking dirt or turf of course everything we saw four races out of Copper Bullet or early this year uh, were, were impressive uh, I think when he was beaten at Churchill Downs by the ill-fated 10 City I came away from that race thinking Copper Bullet would probably be the best as he 
as he did run kind of a strange race that day, but you could see all the talent. That talent manifested itself a little bit at Saratoga when he won a nice uh, performance winning the Saratoga Special. Uh, it's been off for a while, but uh, yeah, everything you said in the hands of Steve Asmus and Copper Bullet should be a horse uh, who's taken very seriously when he comes back. And I think the same can be said for a lot of the Romans runners. We already mentioned Dak Attack. Uh, Romans told me at one point this year, it's been a few months, but he told me that uh, out of all the two-year-olds, he, he kind of thought Hollywood Star might have the most potential. Hollywood Star has the breeding too, Matt. Malibu Moon out of a, uh, of a nice stakes winning mare named Hollywood Story out of Wild Rush. Hollywood Story twice. She wasn't real competitive in either, but twice was good enough to run in the Breeders' Cup distaff. So Hollywood Star has the breeding. An impressive looking horse in the mornings. Good long stride. Uh, he ran kind of in the middle of the pack out in Del Mar in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile. But I think Hollywood Star has every right to become a horse who develops and matures next year. And one of three on our list from the Dale Romans barn. I still think Hollywood Star might have better things ahead of him. Yeah, and I, that's another horse. If Romans figures out some quirky things, um, has got a great deal of potential. Another horse that has done his running in New York so far is Avery Island. This one is out of Street Sense. Another, here we're saying it again, another AP Indy mare. We like all of those things uh, heading down the Derby Trail. Avery Island ran a big, big race to win the Nashua um, uh, just, uh, just last month. And that was going a distance of ground. So that's from the Kieran McLaughlin barn. I like the way that horse uh, uh, moved down the stretch and opened up to victory there also. Absolutely. Uh, you know, talk about breeding for 10 furlongs. You, you have to like the street sense kind of spicy AP Indy line. Uh, I think Avery Island to this point has been a little bit more of a second stringer, but uh, often these horses uh, uh, become different horses as they get older. He's obviously gotten better with each start for Karen McLaughlin. And as you said, the last one, the Nashua, was his best race yet and uh, gives him potential to move forward. Maybe we'll see him uh, soon in the uh, uh, in the Remsen there at Aqueduct again. Avery Island, a horse on the improve, another lightly horse, uh, lightly raced horse. And this one out of the Baffert barn was the uh, runner up, a well beaten second in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile. But Solomini uh, looked good in only his third start. Like Avery Island, I think he's getting better with each start. He's a son of Curlin out of a Stormcat mare. Nothing wrong, wrong with the breeding there. And uh, obviously in good hands in Bob Baffert's barn. Yeah, and, and for all of you fans of American Pharaoh, Solomini is from the Zayat barn. And he ran a good race in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile, too, to hold off Bolt Duro down the stretch. So... Uh, a horse who who's getting better and run a couple of nice races in California. Absolutely, Matt. And if we're talking about American Pharaoh, I'll let you uh, I'll let oh, you yeah. pick up with the next horse. And 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 just because we got to send we got to put this horse on the list. St. Patrick's Day. St. Patrick's Day had a nice win for for Bob Baffert and. I'm including him on there because this is a full brother to American Pharaoh. And what could be better than that? Well, Pioneer of the Nile is the sire. Little Princess Emma out of Yankee Gentleman. That, uh, that is special breeding indeed. And uh, he's done little wrong so far. He was second in his career debut. Came back, as Matt said, with a nice win. So everybody, I think, is looking out for and, and to some extent rooting for St. Patrick's Day to have some of that same magic that his full brother had just a few years ago. Matt, another lightly raced horse on my list, the second out of the Steve Asmussen barn. He actually debuted, uh, I believe uh, I believe our producer and friend Brett Workman was there Friday at Churchill Downs when uh, Principe Guillermo, uh, a well-bred son of Tappet, debuted in impressive fashion. I was surprised he was 7-1, to one, but he, he looked like he should have been 2-5 to five that day at Churchill Downs on Friday. Seven furlong race. He's tap it. And his mare, Aubie K, was a very, very talented daughter of Street Sense. She was, uh, she was injured before she got to prove everything she could do, but clearly talented. Greet her to tap it. And you have an impressive first time winner for Steve Asmussen. 
Yeah, and, and and a little emphasis there, an impressive first-time winner for Steve Asmussen. He typically does not have his horses cranked up to 100% to win first time out. So there's probably lots of room for uh, improvement in, in that Steve Asmussen uh, runner. Let's continue on and talk about another Bob Baffert horse. This one is Zulfigar. And this this is a son of Bodie Meister, and we know Bodie Meister won the Derby last year with uh, Always Dreaming uh, last year, so we know he can sire the Derby horses. Um, this one's out of a mine shaft, mine shaft mare, and that's good also. Won his first time out, earning an 82 buyer fi speed figure. Um, Got to be on the list for you folks to keep an eye on. Yeah, that maiden win was fast, Matt. Uh, I, I would say McKinsey has been the most impressive first-time starter for Baffert uh, among his juveniles this year. But uh, Zulfikar, uh, Bodie Meister, Mineshaft should get better as distances increase. Very impressive in his maiden win. So we had two straight first-time winners there uh, in our 13th and 14th. And then the 15th I wanted to include, he ran a very disappointing race in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile, but I, I think there's still a lot more from Free Drop Billy. He's a horse I liked, uh, obviously, all along. Son of Union Rags, who's been proving to be a very good sire, a Belmont winner out of a Giants Causeway mare. So there's reason to believe that Free Drop Billy uh, will certainly take to the classic distances. I think he just didn't run his race for whatever reason at Del Mar, so I'm going to draw a line through that. He was very impressive in Kentucky, uh, winning uh, both the Churchill Downs and the Grade 1 at Keeneland. So I think Free Drop Billy is a horse we needed on the list, Matt, and the third from the barn of Dale Romans. Yeah, a little bit in and out there for uh, Free Drop Billy, but these are two-year-olds, and that's okay. I'm sure Dale Romans will uh, give his runners a little bit of time off now, a month or two, and get them on the derby trail. Um, so it'll be a challenge for Romans to to keep his three apart while they're earning points to get into the starting gate on the first Saturday in May. And uh, folks, if you're keeping score at home, that, that's 15 horses we mentioned. Matt, I believe we mentioned four from the barn of Bob Baffert, three from the barn of Dale Romans, who's yet to win the Kentucky Derby, but he's been knocking on the door for years. The Louisville native, I expect him to win the Derby sooner than later. We also mentioned a couple from the barn of both Steve Asmussen and Chad Brown, two of the top trainers in America as well. So uh, overall, that list of 15 was uh, uh, a total of eight different trainers, Aiden O'Brien, Todd Pletcher among them. But uh, number one on my list was the Mick Ruiz, Bolt Dora. Matt had good magic, number one, but we both saw them as the top two juveniles right now. Folks, we hope this gets you off to a good start thinking Kentucky Derby. Five and a half months will go like a snap of the fingers and we'll be at Kentucky Derby 2018 before you know it. Can I get a few parting shots from you, Mr. Shipman? Absolutely. And folks, you, you should keep track of this list because the first Kentucky Derby future wager pool is coming up in just a week or so. It, it's uh, it, I think the wagering is Thanksgiving weekend. So you might want to see how many of these Horses are on that list of 23 and see if we're getting some good odds. I always like to take a look at those future pools, Brian, just for the heck of it. And as, and as always, I want to fun. Think, yeah. Yeah. A couple bucks here and there. Uh, uh, can't hurt. And as always, I want to thank our producer, Brett Workman. Yeah, Matt, 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 you're right. If we can get one of these, any one of these 15, there's not a there's not a sprinter type on this list, folks. So if any one of these 15 are 80, 90 to 1 on the early list just because maybe they lost their last race or not a lot have heard of them yet, do consider and uh, put a few bucks down on them. And like we said, it, it's, it's all for fun. Thank you, as Matt said, to Brett Workman, our wonderful producer. Thank you to the best contest site out there, Derby Wars, our sponsor. And thank you most of all to all you who watch every week. We sure do appreciate you tuning in to Horse Center. We will be back with plenty more Kentucky Derby talk. We still have some big races to go, though, in 2017. Matt and I will be back next Tuesday to talk more about what's going on the rest of the season. For now, 
Have a great week. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next week.